Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. It's a little bit frosty out this morning, but I won't let that stop me from taking you guys on a trip to the range. So here's what I've got for us today. I'm gonna to be shooting a five shot group with the Taurus Raging Hunter 460. I've got the Underwood 300 grain XTPs and we'll set the chronograph up and get a little bit of data from that as well. See what we're getting out of this six and three quarter inch barrel. A little bit cool out here this morning. Looks like about 17 or 18 degrees. This carport is going to pay for itself this winter. This time last year, I had to come down here and scrape the snow and ice off the bench. This year, I just come down and it's ready to go. And in fact, this is a clip of me clearing the snow and ice from the bench last year, uh, February of last year. So it really makes me appreciate having this carport over the bench. And this was a Patreon funded range improvement. So I appreciate all the guys that chipped in and, and helped me make this improvement here on the range. I, I can't thank you guys enough. Not trying to turn this into the weather channel or anything, but it looks like we got almost seven inches of snow down here on the Buffalo Range. Okay, so I've got five of these Underwood ammo cartridges loaded into the cylinder. Again, this is a 300 grain XTP, loaded by Underwood, of course. Advertised velocity is 1,750 feet per second. Now, I don't know what barrel length that they're testing that out of. This is a six and three quarter inch barrel. So I've got the chronograph set up here between me and my target. I'm gonna try to do this, get this, uh, these chronograph numbers as I'm shooting for group here. So I'm not wasting so much ammo. This ammo is expensive comes to about $2.50 a round, if you're wondering. I've got a B8 center target hanging down there at 50 yards. I need that big bullseye, uh, if you wonder about that, because with iron sights like this, it's just hard for me to focus on that front sight and still be able to see any kind of a bullseye. That, that larger bullseye helps me with that. I know the old uh, adage is aim small, miss small. But if you can't see it, it doesn't do you a bit of good. So let's see what I can do here and hopefully pick these chronograph readings up all at the same time. I will say this. I've shot this revolver quite a bit now since that initial review. And when you sit down at a bench like this and shoot it, the more you shoot it, or not you, I should say I, the more I shoot it, the worse I get. This is a beast of a revolver. It's it's not a cartridge for everybody, and I guess I just start flinching or anticipating that recoil because if I shoot more than ten rounds through this thing, my groups just get bigger and bigger. So I've I've shot one group while I was down here with this gun. I've also got my 44 Magnum back here. I done a little bit of shooting with it. Enough of me talking. I found that this the recoil bangs my elbow against the table, so I got me a elbow pad there. Fourteen hundred and seventeen feet per second. It looks like on that one and you guys most of you guys that watch the channel know this I'm shooting a paper target if you hear the steel ringing It's because I've got it intentionally set up in front of a steel plate
1374 on that one. Thirteen eighty two. Thirteen sixty nine. Thirteen forty seven. So I can't see what I've done from here. I've got a camera down there so that you guys can see what I've done. I'll have to walk down and take a look. So let's go take a look. The sun really shining now. Hopefully it melts some of the snow off. As far as those chronograph numbers go, we had an average velocity of 1,378 feet per second with a standard deviation of about 25. All right. Well, I had hoped to keep them in two inches, but it doesn't look like I did. That's a pretty good sized little group. I did manage to keep them all five in the tin ring. Broke the ring right there, but they're all five in the tin ring, so my sights are where they should be. Let's measure that group. Yeah, that's a... Uh, from center to center of the farthest two apart, looking at about two and three quarter inches. And I don't want to sound like I'm disappointed with that either. That's actually, that's actually pretty good shooting. So I'll take it and I'll try to improve on it. Really liking this revolver. I'm glad I got it. In fact, the more I shoot it, the more I like it. Kind of growing on me like that. I'm going to get me a, a holster for it and kind of bang around the woods with it this fall. Maybe do a little deer hunting. I might get me a chest rig. Seems like a good way to carry a revolver of this size. But anyway, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on this cold January Kentucky morning. I did leave a little bit of a, uh, room for improvement with that group. I think I can shoot it better than that uh, given the better conditions and stuff dang hands or not i'm not gonna i could i could list several excuses <laughs> i'm not gonna do that uh, that's the best i could shoot it today i think i can do better on another day so we'll probably revisit this at some time or another i like that i've got the sight set where i want them at least with that particular load my group was decently centered there in in the tin ring of that target so i'm happy with that overall i've been pleased with this thing so far obviously or i wouldn't be sitting here telling you how much i like it but i guess uh I guess that's all I got. I'll go ahead and bring this video to a close. Remember guys, if anybody asks you to give up your freedom for the greater good, freedom is the greater good. But that's all I've got, and I'll talk with y'all again soon.